makes a difference as to what you're going to have to face. It does. It does. Well, God bless you. Yeah. Okay. We'll wait on them here. <laughs> Y'all ready? Uh, good morning, and uh, I want to thank you for being here. And I want to also thank uh, FEMA Administrator Craig Fugate for coming to Baton Rouge to, to be with us this morning. Um, it makes a, a world difference when the federal state and local partners are all in the same room face to face um, and talking. This is certainly a critical time uh, for all of us in South Louisiana. Uh, this morning at the press conference, I'm going to speak followed by Administrator Fugate. Uh, and the individuals behind me uh, will be available because once you start to ask questions, if, if whoever the best person is to respond to your questions, that's who's going to come forward uh, and answer the question. I want you to know that the administrator and I just met, uh, and we got an update on the response, and we are also going to meet again very shortly uh, to discuss not only how we wrap up the response phase, which we're nowhere close to having that finished, but what we need to do uh, for the remainder of the response and then transition into uh, the recovery as well. And the recovery itself is multidimensional with near uh, term uh, things that we have to do midterm and then long term. Uh, I want to remind everybody this is a historic uh, flooding event. Uh, and when you have a storm that is unnamed, it's, it's not a, it wasn't a tropical storm, it wasn't a hurricane, a lot of times people underestimate the uh, the impact that it would have. Uh, but this is historic, it's unprecedented, and we are in seeing uh, unprecedented flood levels uh, as, as the waters move south. As you know, Sunday I requested a major disaster declaration from the federal government uh, for 21 parishes. Uh, the president uh, was very quick, and I want to thank him for, uh, for approving the first four parishes uh, that were requested, and those parishes were East Baton Rouge, Tanchpaho, Parish Livingston and St. Lena. Uh, I am happy to say that today eight additional parishes have been added to that major disaster declaration. Those eight parishes are Acadia, Ascension, East Feliciana, Iberia, Lafayette, Point Capi, St. Landry, and Vermilion. Uh, we have been traveling extensively over the last several days uh, with FEMA uh, individuals, uh, Jerry Stoller from uh, FEMA Region 6, and then yesterday Tony Robinson, who is the administrator there uh, at Region 6, uh, collecting information and data on the damage. Uh, I am confident that more parishes are going to be added uh, to the list of, of currently declared parishes uh, as we move forward, and we're working around the clock. Uh, to make sure that every available resource that would help us to respond and to recover will be available to the people of Louisiana. Uh, I want everyone who's been impacted by this storm, regardless of whether, where they live and whether they live in a parish that has been uh, added to the declaration list, to register for disaster assistance. Uh, that is extremely important, even if you are not in a parish that has been declared when your parish is declared, that registration will roll over. You will not have to do it again. Uh, and I want everyone, and I'm going to give you some information on that. And I want everyone out there to understand nobody has been forgotten. Uh, it is a, this is a very difficult uh, situation to get response out as, as quickly as we would like to. Uh, we fully understand that, that now that the sun is out, it's hot, uh, we still have um, about 34,000 uh, meters uh, without electricity. That's that's customers, so those are homes or businesses. Uh, we understand that there's still a lot of people who are suffering, uh, and those people who have been evacuated, uh, they're not entirely uh, comfortable in their circumstances either, although we're doing our dead level best at the shelters to make sure that we're taking care of them. Um, let me get back to the registration for disaster assistance. I'm asking everybody out there who's been impacted by the storm, if you haven't done it yet, please um, register for disaster assistance uh, at disasterassistance.gov online. I'll say again, disasterassistance.gov, or you can call 1-800-621-FEMA. 
That's 1-800-621-3362. So far, we've had right at 40,000 individuals register for disaster assistance in this manner, and we're asking that individuals continue to do that. Uh, it is important to remember uh, FEMA never charges for services that they deliver. If someone shows up at your house, if someone contacts you and says they're a FEMA representative and they've got some assistance for you but they're asking you to pull out your wallet or your checkbook or your credit card, tell them no thanks. Uh, that's not the way FEMA operates. And while I'm on that topic, I want to alert everyone that there are folks uh, who are unscrupulous uh, they will come in and try to uh, take advantage of folks, especially elderly people, by promising them that they will, uh, for some amount of money, uh, make repairs or, or render some sort of assistance. Please be very, very careful uh, that you are not uh, a victim of a scam. And if you think that any of that has taken place, please contact the Louisiana Attorney General's office. Uh, so while we're beginning uh, to enter recovery mode, especially on the west side of the Mississippi River and on the north side of the Florida parishes on the, uh, on the east side of the Mississippi River, I want everyone to understand that we are still very much in an emergency search and rescue response mode uh, for much of the Florida parishes. Uh, saving life is the most important priority that we have. We're gonna dedicate every available resource to that effort until it's no longer required. I would like to update the shelter numbers. Last night, uh, we sheltered 8,098 individuals. Uh, and this number is changing rapidly. Some people are able to move out of the shelters and into their homes or out of their shelters and into the home of family and friends. Um, but other people are being moved out of their homes and coming to our shelter. So this is gonna change. We have rescued local first responders, state agencies, and uh, certainly uh, just individuals being good neighbors um, have rescued well over 20,000 people thus far across Louisiana and well over a thousand pets. I am sad to tell you that I have to update the fatality a number. We have eight confirmed fatalities that were storm uh, related. We have right at 40,000 homes that have been impacted to varying degrees uh, thus far with the flood waters. Um, I'm going to ask for everyone's continued patience, and I'm going to ask everyone to join their prayers to mine uh, that the suffering of our people will be uh, quickly uh, diminished and, and that uh, we will be able to deliver to them the assistance they need in a timely uh, manner. Uh, as I said, nobody is going to be forgotten. We're going to work around the clock, and we're going to do everything humanly possible uh, to render aid. Uh, and with that in mind, I am proud to be followed by uh, Administrator Fugate, who is going to share some information with you on the response uh, that we're going to be able to, to deliver now uh, with FEMA based upon the expanded declaration. And so, Administrator Fugate, again, thank you very much for being here. Uh, thank you, Governor. It seems like we were here this spring talking about another flood with a lot of the similar issues. This one's bigger. It's impacted more people. And uh, just like before, uh, the governor's team has been leading the charge for the response and FEMA's supporting and getting ready to support recovery. As the governor said, uh, President Obama, <coughs> based upon our request, we were not doing any damage assessments. We just basically took the information we had. Uh, President Obama immediately declared the uh, major disaster area for Louisiana. We turned on a couple of parishes we knew were hard hit. And we're adding to that list uh, as soon as we can get any verifying information and we're not going into a house counts. We're just wanting to make sure that we're getting everything the governor's asked for. We will be adding those parishes. But as the governor said, do not wait until the parishes are added. You go ahead and register. If you've had flood damage, particularly if you didn't have flood insurance, register. If you had flood insurance and you're having any issues with your claim, also call us at the FEMA registration number, 1-800-621-FEMA or disasterassistance.gov. We want to get that address for you. Uh, our primary goal right now is, again, supporting the governor's priorities. Uh, really focused on, we've got a lot of people in shelters, we've got a lot of people who may not be able to get back into their homes. So what will be the next step for temporary housing? And then the long-term goals the governor has, getting schools open, getting businesses back in operation, and looking at long-term housing. 
we still had folks here from the previous flood. We were able to jumpstart that response with those folks, but we're, we're literally bringing in thousands of people across the country to support this. And, you know, you had the Olympics, you got the election. If you looked at the national news, you're probably on the third or fourth page. Uh, FEMA understands this is a very large disaster impacting tens of thousands of people. Uh, irregardless of what it may be getting on the national coverage, we know this has been a significant impact here in Louisiana and our commitment, the President's commitment, to support the governors and team through a full recovery. And it's going to be a hard one, as the governor said. Uh, but just because national media maybe hasn't been picking up on all of this, uh, making this the headlines, we think it is the headline disaster that we're supporting right now. Governor. Thank you very much, uh, Administrator. And uh, with that, uh, we're going to take uh, a few questions. And again, if you have a question that you know is best addressed to one of the individuals behind me, go ahead and let us know that, and we'll, we'll bring them up. Yes, ma'am. Question for you, Ginger Wilson, Local 33 News, Fox 44. I um, hope your families are okay. Um, since the state is in an uh, economic crisis, how will it manage to uh, pay for the um, damage and recovery efforts? And because of this, do you plan on calling a special session? I don't have plans uh, right now to call a special <coughs> session. Um, as you know, we were managing our cash flow very carefully before this happened. I can tell you that the, the most um, positive news came with the declaration and the expanded declaration because we are now uh, have available to us a cost sharing where 75 cents on the dollar for most of what we're going to be doing with, with respect to this storm will be borne by the federal government. We have a 25% uh, obligation on that. Uh, but some of the things that we're going to be making available for the people of Louisiana will uh, result in us having an obligation to pay our share, but but it will be initially paid in full by FEMA, and then FEMA will bill us. And so that the good news is that won't uh, immediately have uh, an impact on our ability to to uh, to go forward. But we are not going to allow, and this is what I want everyone to understand. Uh, the fiscal condition of the state is not going to limit what we do uh, to make sure that people get the assistance that they need, uh, both in the response and then in the recovery phase. That is my commitment uh, to the people of Louisiana. Governor, after yes, Katrina, there was a door-to-door -door search for flood victims, but that was a relatively contained area compared to the rural nature of many of the areas that have been impacted by this flood. <laughs> Strategically, have you started discussing with the National Guard and local law enforcement how yeah. you're going to be able to do that? Well, Sue, that's, that's a good question. We actually are starting that effort today uh, in uh, Livingston Parish uh, and in Ascension Parish. Um, the uh, search and rescue protocol uh, that was used previously was developed by the Fire Marshal's Office uh, and Fire Marshal Butch Browning uh, with a number of other individuals from different agencies are going to start that process today. Uh, we are in the, the parishes where this is going to be uh, most needed and making sure that uh, we are coordinating these efforts directly with the offices of emergency preparedness there and integrating uh, their officers as well. Be and it's not just residences. In this case, we have a lot of automobiles uh, that are not where they're supposed to be, and they've been washed off the roadways, and we're going to have to search and mark each of those uh, automobiles, and we pray that we don't find uh, any motors uh, deceased in those automobiles. That is, that is starting today. It is going to be uh, difficult because of the reasons that you mentioned, but we also have uh, a lot of pockets of water uh, that make it very difficult to timely, in a timely way, get into these places and affect these searches. Uh, but we're not going to wait for the water to go down. It's just going to take us longer to get it done. And we are engaging in that today. Governor, on yes, that uh, th same issue, do you have a central <coughs> location where people can call in if they are missing people? And do you have any estimates on how many people might be missing at this point? Uh, well, we, we don't know how many people are missing. We know that the communications is tough between family members who are searching for those who are in shelters and sometimes for those people in shelters to be uh, able to contact their family members elsewhere. Uh, I don't know that we have a good uh, handle on the number of people who are missing. And when you say missing, it, in the, for the vast majority of cases, the communication is just not going to be there. The, 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 those people, uh, for the most part, are going to be safe and sound somewhere. Um, but in terms of, of what number they should call, 
I, I'm gonna, do we have uh, anybody behind me with that number? And if we don't, well, Red Cross, I'm sorry, if, if you would call the Red Cross and what's your number? 1-800-RED-CROSS. That's easy to remember, people. 1-800-RED-CROSS is the number to call. And there's a safe and well page on the Red Cross website. And the Red Cross operates a website with a safe and well page on it. Uh, and so that's, that's the, um, those are the places that one should go if they are searching for a family member or a loved one. Governor, how are the first responders holding up? Well, the, first of all, they're uh, absolute heroes. And they're holding up as, as well as can be expected. It's at about this point in any prolonged uh, uh, disaster recovery effort, or I should say response effort, uh, that battle fatigue does start to set in. And, uh, but, but I am confident that the people who are out there running the, the parish efforts, uh, the folks here working on behalf of the state, uh, that they're doing a, a great job. Uh, and the communications between them and us has been spectacular. Uh, at this point, I don't know of any assistance that's been asked for by any uh, of the local first responders and offices of emergency preparedness that hasn't been quickly uh, given to them. Uh, but like any prolonged operation, you do have to have time to rest uh, just so that you can continue to function and make good decisions. And we are seeing uh, the need for that uh, down at the local level especially. Uh, but but the good news is that they are, they are doing that. Uh, the people that I'm talking to are getting now between four and six hours worth of sleep. And, and that, that really is critically important. There's only so long you can go without that. Yes, ma'am. Oh my gosh, I've forgotten what my question was. <laughs> um, there was some talk about temporary housing. I was just curious um, if, it's, if it's too early to tell or will we see something like the trailers or Katrina cottages? What well, is it, I, it is too early to know exactly what it's going to look like. Uh, because we have to take uh, into consideration this particular group of, of, of storm victims and what their needs are going to be. They're not all going to be the same. Which percentage of people uh, have damage to their homes uh, that will be relatively quick and easy to, to uh, remedy so that they can move back in? Which percentage are going to have more extensive damage? And, and then within those groups, what are their abilities uh, to pay? And do they have insurance? And so there's a lot of information but FEMA knows how to, how to do this, and, and they're going to have teams in our shelters and in our communities uh, talking to individuals who are victims to figure out exactly what this population looks like so that we can fashion a plan both in the near, the mid, and the long term. I shouldn't say both. In the, the, the near, the midterm, and the, the long term to make sure that our strategy is right. Um, but I, I'd ask uh, the administrator to be more specific than that. Again, all options are on the table. First thing is, is there rental properties? Again, some areas that's going to make sense, other areas that won't. Does it make sense to do temporary repairs, get people back in their home and they get power? Because we know that's the best solution long term. We'll do that. If we need to bring in any type of temporary housing units, uh, first thing is, uh, they're better than they've ever been. They're all HUD approved. Uh, one of the things we've done, the additional step is for those that, are, that may need uh, universal access trailers, we now have a fire sprinkle. Uh, so we actually are above the HUD standards. We have much improved models. So if that is a requirement, this is not the FEMA travel trailers. These are HUD approved. They all meet the HUD standards. In many cases, our structures actually exceed HUD standards. But as the governor said, it will be based upon the needs. And the fastest response in many cases will be make emergency repairs at home, get them back in it. In other cases, it's get them a rental property because it's going to take longer. Along those lines. For the, for the administrator, Melinda? No, it's for you. Okay. Uh, by, by the way, uh, one of the things that we, we need to focus on is getting the electricity back on in these homes as quickly as possible so that air conditioners can be turned on uh, to minimize any mold impact. Uh, but electricity can't be turned on until we know the homes are safe. Uh, and so there's, there's an awful lot involved here. Uh, but, and, and we've got a lot of work to do. And, and that's why I'm glad that we have uh, state and, and uh, federal and local partners working together. Um, the insurance commissioner has, has suggested that they know there are very few homes that have flood insurance in a lot of these areas. I mean, it's a real low number. Are you concerned about people's ability to actually afford, even with the traditional FEMA assistance, uh, what they will need to pay to, to rebuild their houses? I mean, obviously in Katrina, we had to have a separate program that paid for that. Yeah, well, obviously I'm concerned. 
and, and it, the list of concerns that I have right now are much longer than we can ever uh, go through. Uh, but that, that is a concern. But one thing that everybody should understand is that there is assistance available for people whose homes have been damaged by floodwaters uh, if they did not live in a flood zone uh, and weren't required to have flood insurance, uh, they can be uh, reimbursed up to, or, or the repairs that can be covered uh, through that assistance are just shy of $33,000. Uh, now, I believe that it is also true uh, that if they live, live in a flood zone and that particular home has never received federal assistance, that they can also receive assistance for just shy of $33,000, but that's a one-time thing. And we don't believe that many of the homes that are impacted in this flooding event were impacted previously by the other storms. And so that should be um, an available um, source of assistance for a, a large group of people. While that amount of assistance is just shy of $33,000, it is not automatically $33,000. It is whatever the damage is up to that amount and I can tell you that in, in past uh, flood events, uh, the average uh, check amount was $7,500. Uh, now, I'm not suggesting to you that that's going to be the average here because every storm is different, um, but, but that's the way this works. And if I just said something that was incorrect. No, Governor, you can work with FEMA. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Governor, yes, one of the challenges after uh, Katrina was as people entered the recovery phase was ripping out uh, off sheet rock, putting things on the side of the road, piles of um, debris, and then FEMA assisted or didn't assist sometimes in collecting all of yeah. that. And uh, we are in some of the people want to recover immediately, so what's yeah, the problem we, with that? We, we are going to have a meeting uh, as soon as this press conference is over. One of the things we're going to talk about will be debris and debris removal. Uh, and we've got all of the agencies who have a role to play in that will be in this meeting. Uh, and, but you, you bring up another point. Uh, we are going to need volunteers to come and help individuals to muck out their homes, to get the mud out, to get uh, uh, wet drywall removed, to get carpets and, and, and ruined flooring out um, so that individuals will be able to get back in their homes as quickly as possible. Uh, and be able to live there because that's where they want to be and in many cases that's the cheapest alternative uh, for us to provide assistance but they're going to need help not everybody is able uh, to do this on their own not everybody has uh, friends and family members uh, who are able to assist them and so going forward we, we and by the way we have had a tremendous response with respect to volunteers uh, and and it's it's across the the whole gamut uh, if you go to the shelters, for example, you're going to see many, many uh, volunteers. But I am asking for organized groups, both in Louisiana and outside of Louisiana, and a lot of times uh, the faith-based community really steps up uh, to, to organize and come in at the appropriate time, not just yet, but at the appropriate time, and to volunteer to help these people to get back in their homes. And you can do that. Uh, by contacting the Lieutenant Governor's office. He is organizing, and, and I'm so glad that, that Billy Nungesser is here with me today, and he's been with me throughout, and we traveled yesterday, and we delivered this message to the uh, parishes that we visited. Uh, but I'm gonna ask him to, to come forward and, and explain how volunteer groups, whether you're individuals or groups, uh, can, can uh, register with his office and then be directed to where they're needed so that there's, there's not unnecessary delays and, and that we can uh, quickly and, and get them in to where they can render uh, the assistance that they're trying to render. Billy? Thank you, Governor. It's volunteerlouisiana.gov. They can sign up um, and we'll work with AmeriCorps as well. And as the Governor mentioned, the limited money that may be available if they didn't have flood insurance, these teams will also be available after we clean out the homes to help many of the people without flood insurance rebuild, uh, put those materials back in the house as well. Thank you. Governor, you spoke earlier about the vehicles that have been submerged. One of the problems that Baton Rouge is having, and many people are having, is that they can't get to work because their cars have been damaged. Has there been any discussion of setting up something a la LA Swift that we had post Katrina that will transport folks that live in, say, Denham Springs? back into Baton Rouge and vice versa so that they can at least have that normalcy and that income of coming back to work? Um, 
I don't recall that I have been present in any discussions where that was um, uh, the subject of those discussions, but, but you raise a good point and, and we, will, we will start taking a look at that. We do know that one of the things that we were required to do in, in previous storms where you had widespread flooding is that uh, through the Office of Motor Vehicles and the Louisiana State Police, we, we inventoried all of those flooded vehicles by VIN number and we had a database where they were entered into uh, so that so that they could not then be sold uh, without being disclosed as being a basically a salvage vehicle uh, because that's incredibly important uh, and so we, we likely will have to do uh, that again. Last question. Oh, Governor, Wait. I realize you don't have an economic number in terms of what the impact is right now, but is there a way that you can just describe the scope of this and what kind of a hit it is for your state? Well, it's, it's huge, but um, I don't really like to dwell on the economic impact in terms of the, the state treasury. Uh, the toll right now is on people, and, and that's where we're focused. Uh, we're going to make the money take care of itself. We're going to make the best possible decisions going forward. Uh, we're going to rely on, on the federal government uh, to the maximum extent possible, which is why we're glad that, that uh, additional parishes have been added and added for the full range of assistance that's available. Um, and, and look, it, we have a commissioner of administration, a secretary of the Department of Revenue. We are monitoring this, uh, this situation very closely. Um, and, but I don't want anybody out there thinking that, that the fiscal situation in our state, which has been well publicized for months now, is going to limit in any way what we're gonna do going forward uh, to rescue people and to get them back in their homes and to take care of them as best as we possibly can uh, between now and then. In a couple of weeks, you're gonna hear from me and Jay Darden about what we believe the impacts have been and will continue to be and whether any additional steps will be necessary. Thank all of you very much. I appreciate you being here. Can I get one question about looting? We got confirmed reports what? about looting. What do you wanna to say to folks out there whose homes are underwater and now people are starting to do this? I'm gonna tell them what their mama told them a long time ago. Uh, that they need to be good citizens and, and we need to be good neighbors to one another uh, and we're not going to tolerate that. Um, and in fact, uh, we are, we are uh, taking uh, appropriate steps now to make sure that every parish with widespread damage uh, is going to have a curfew uh, tonight uh, to, to aid law enforcement to make sure that that, that sort of activity uh, is minimized. But, but there's no excuse for that. And, and it, it's marring what, what has been a tremendous response uh, about the people of Louisiana taking care of their own. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for taking that last question.